Hello and welcome to our little guide to using the Canon XF100. In this film we'll try and explain some of the basics about the camera to help you get started. It will hopefully be a useful guide for people just starting out who don't have much experience of cameras and we'll show you how to get set up and to record film and sound. So the camera comes in this box and inside the box should be camera obviously, a couple of batteries to power the camera, headphones very important so you can hear what you're recording and a card reader as well so you can transfer your footage from the camera onto a computer. Now there may be smaller cables in there too but we'll not worry about them for, for now. First though we'll start by putting the battery in. Now the battery goes in at the back of the camera. You put it in at the top and slide it down. And there's even a wee arrow there to point you in the right direction. To take it out, all you do is push this little lever, handily named battery release. Push the battery up and remove it. But I'll put it back in for now though. Move that case out of the way. Okay, now we're going to put the camera on a tripod. And first I'll take it out of the bag. One of our newer tripods. Now firstly, you take it out of the bag and you want to unclip the legs here and we'll move it into position to make it sturdy. One other thing, is we'll, find the, we'll often find the arm for the tripod in the bag. It's a case of just slotting it on easily enough. And the little teeth should just grip each other quite easily. Just get it to a place that's comfortable. Okay. The next thing we want to do <coughs> is to remove the base plate. And we'll do that by sliding it back and pushing on this button on the left hand side. So we unscrew it there, push in the button, slide it back and off. So what we'll do is we're going to take the base plate in one hand and the camera in the other hand and we'll fit the base plate to, you guessed it, the base of the camera. Now you see here, there's two holes. The screw that we have on here goes in the second one. And we can manually tighten it to begin. But you can finish it off with a screwdriver or, even easier, a 50 pence piece of coin. Now you really do want it firmly uh, attached uh, to make sure it doesn't come loose while you're filming, which could ruin your shot, or even worse, the camera could come off the tripod. Now to slide it on, uh, what you do, you slide the base plate forward back onto the tripod. Once it's on, tighten it up using this little lever to the right of the tripod, this one here. Again, make sure, to make sure that it's on securely. Perhaps, you know, just lift it up ever so slightly. Try and slide it back and forward. I really cannot emphasise how important that is, both for your shot and for the safety of the camera. What I'm going to do, I'm just going to lift the tripod up a little bit, adjust it ever so slightly just to get it up to my level. Sure the legs are on the ground. And I'll also tighten, there's a number of, leaf, number of levers on the tripod just to help you tighten it up. I'm going round. So this one here just helps you tighten it. Loosen or tighten it, depending on how you want to move it. 
Okay, next we're going to check that there's a media card in the camera. And we're going to open up this little screen at the side. In here, you'll see that there's two slots, CFA and CFB. The camera takes compact flash cards or CF cards as they're also known. Now you can open up the slots using the little button like this. Your camera will either have one 32 uh, gigabit card or two 16 gigabit cards. It's really the same difference. As you can see, this one here has one 32 gigabit card in it. It's in CFB. Now to take out the cards is easy enough, but we are dealing with very delicate equipment here. So we have to take care, speaking of taking care. Can I move this out of the way? Clip over it. Okay, so you push the uh, grey button out, and push the grey button, and it's going to pop out a little bit. Push it back all the way, and the card will come out. To put it back in, we just slide it in all the way. It might need a little bit more effort at the end, but really it's not hard, so if you're getting any resistance at all from the camera, then the card might be round the wrong way. Under no circumstances, try and force it. We've had students in the past force these cards and that damaged the slots to the point that they're no longer usable, which is perhaps why this card is in CFB instead of CFA. Whether you use slots A or B is irrelevant. Although, if you've got two 16 gigabit cards, you'll probably be using both. So I'll just shut the doors over on the slots there. So now we can turn the camera on. The power button is on the left of the, ca of the camera and you slide it to the left to enable you to film. Now as you can see we can actually monitor our picture either using the flip out screen at the side or the viewfinder on top here. Uh, in my opinion there's no right or wrong way to work, it's just down to what you prefer. The screen is obviously bigger, so maybe that's better, but bear in mind, it does use more power, so the battery won't last as long. So let's have a look at the display. We've got here the minutes left on the battery. Very important to keep an eye on that. The minutes left on the CF card, which is also very important, so you know how long you can record for. Standby or record is up here so you know whether you're recording or not. As you can see at the moment, we're not. And here we've got some information about bit rate, frame rate and resolution. Now don't worry too much about that at the minute, but we do recommend working at 35 megabits per second and 1280 by 720 and at 25p, 25 frames. So it's so if it says here if it says that here already, then that's fine. But if not, I'll show you how to adjust it in a second. And as you can see at the moment, uh, we've got 50 megabits per second, 920 by 1080, and 25p. So we'll change that later. This part here shows the uh, audio channels and the levels. Now there's a few other things on the screen, but we'll leave that for another video. Now we can then go into the menu which is located here. Now there's lots of sub-menus with all manner of interesting settings. Um, you can do all sorts of tricks, you know, from time-lapsing to, uh, you know, various types of recording, but for now, we're just going to keep it simple and I'm only going to point out a couple. Now the first thing is initialising. Now initialise is when we wipe the card clean of any data that's on it and that then lets us start recording with a full card to use. Now, you shouldn't have to do this when you take out the camera because obviously the person before you should have initialised before giving it back and that's what we would ask you to do when you're finished with the camera you've saved all of your footage onto a computer before you bring it back to us then please initialise the card uh, and as I say that will make the card clear for the next person that takes the camera out so to initialise we use this little lever here to scroll down to the bottom to the little spanner icon. What we do is we push the lever in to enter the menu called Other Functions. We scroll down to the second bottom option
which is initialize media. We push in to select that, and then you have the choice of CFA or CFB. However, only slots with a card in it will be available, so if you only have one card, you can select the relevant slot. You push in to select it, and that will warn you that you're about to erase all the data on the card. Now, as long as you're happy that there's nothing on the card that you haven't backed up already, then select OK. OK. You can then go up to the arrow and go back into the menu. And staying in other functions, push up to bitrate resolution. Select that. Select that and move the arrow to 35 megabits per second, 1280 by 720, and select that. Then push down to frame rate and choose 25p. As I say, you may find that the camera already has those settings, so you don't need to do that. We can then exit the menu by hitting the menu button. Another function that's useful to know is the zoom rocker, to zoom in and out, obviously. And that's based up here, just on the on the right hand side, which is very convenient for your uh, for your for your right hand if probably you're holding it in your right hand. It's kind of set up to be held in the right hand anyway. Uh, the other thing to think about at this moment is white balance. White balancing is the process of giving the camera an accurate reading of the color white as how the camera reads the colour white can differ quite a bit depending on your shooting conditions. So if you're shooting outside, white can appear a little bluer or colder. And if you're inside, it can appear a little warmer or appear more yellow. Now, there's a few options for white balancing, but for me, the easiest way to do it is to show the camera a solid white object and to tell it to white balance. So what you do is you get a white piece of paper or card and you get your friend to hold it up. Then zoom in and press the white balance button, which is on the side of the camera. You should do that whenever your lighting conditions change. So for example, if you go from the inside to the out or vice versa. One thing we may want to do at this moment is to take the lens cap off. Just so you know you're always gonna get a picture. There's one last thing to look at as far as, uh, as far as the picture you're recording is concerned. But before we do that, we'll think about how best you're going to record the sound. There's two ways to do that on the XF100. The first and the easiest is to use the internal mic, which is located here on the front of the camera. The mic is perfectly acceptable if you're working in a nice, quiet, controlled environment like a bedroom or a studio, assuming your subjects are not going to be too far away from the camera. However, if you're working outside, then it's advisable to use a microphone. The most common microphone taken out with the XF100 would be a boom mic like this. Now, strictly speaking, the boom is the pole you're using to direct it, rather than the mic itself. So you might not necessarily need that bit. The way to plug it in is like this. Take this end of this XLR cable and connect it into CH1 or channel 1. Then on the other side, I'll move it back around, we've got a number of settings here. So on the other side, we're going to choose external next to CH1 as we're now using an external mic as opposed to the internal one. We've got external selected there. The next option up to select is plus 48 volts. This stands for plus 48 volts, which means you're powering the microphone from the camera. Finally, at the top, there's an A and an M, which as you might guess, is for automatic and manual. Now, if you're confident in what you're doing, then you can decide the level of sound that you pick up. If not, then perhaps you want to leave the camera to do the work. If you choose manual, then you can use the dials at the top to control the sound. Although in this case, it'll only be CH1, as we've only got one mic plugged in. We could, of course, put another microphone in to get the sound coming through on two channels. But for now, we'll leave it at one. And another reason you might want to do that is perhaps 
there's two different people speaking and you want them to have a microphone each. Now, as it's currently set, they will actually be getting sound from two places, the external mic here and the internal mic, which is actually still on channel two. But let's get all the sound coming from the external mic onto both channels. So to do that, we need to go back into the menu, push down one step to audio setup, select that and then select audio input and the first option should be XLR channel. Change it from CH1 to CH1 and 2. Then press menu to exit. And you should now have the sound coming through both channels, which we do now. One really important point on sound is to always wear headphones to monitor what you're recording. Now it doesn't have to be the cameraman that does that, but someone really should do it. You can obviously monitor the little readings and 99 times out of 100, that'll be fine. But there's the one time that, you know, you'll perhaps be looking at the levels going up and down and it'll be interference so or it'll be something else that you don't want. By putting headphones on, you can also make sure that your sound is loud enough and that you're picking up everything you need to, like dialogue. And also make sure you're not picking up things that you don't want. Planes, workmen, phones ringing, cars going past. Uh, you really want to put your headphones on. And you put your headphones in at the back here. Okay, so we're almost ready to go. The last thing to look at at this point is the focus. You can choose to let the camera do the work for you or you can control it yourself. If this is your first time really working with a camera, you might just want to select autofocus and let the camera do the work for you. And then you can concentrate on framing the shot, zooming in and out, etc. If you'd like to focus for yourself, then you can select M here. M there. And then you can just use this ring to focus, assuming that you select there as well. Okay, that's enough functions for now. If you've lined up your shot, then hit record. And record is here on the top or here, which would just be where your thumb is. So if you framed your shot, then all you have to do is to hit record and either button will be fine. And when you do hit, uh, when you do hit record, you'll see standby change to a red dot and record will appear as well. And what you'll also see is the time code here turning over. And also, as it goes on, you'll notice the time on the card going down as well, telling you how many minutes of card space you've got now. When you've got what you want, you can use either of the start-stop buttons to stop recording. Now, if you want to see what you've filmed, then what you can do is switch from camera to media. And on the screen, you should see all the individual clips that you've shot. And there they are there. You can scro scroll through them using the little uh, lever here. And once you get onto each one, once you get one that you want to play, you just hit play on the side. Working. When you've seen enough, you can just hit stop. If you want to record any more, you can switch back into camera mode and carry on. All your settings should still be in place. That's basically it for this. Once you're finished, remember to take the base plate from the tripod off the camera and put it back into the to the tri on back onto the tripod. Put everything back in their bags or cases. In the next film, I'll tell you about importing what you've just filmed into a computer to be edited.